Right, to our top story today. Government ministers are to meet later to consider measures into clearing the names of hundreds of sub-postmasters convicted in the post office horizon scandal. Well, the post office is now being investigated by the police over potential fraud offences arising from its prosecution of staff. More than one million people have also now signed a petition calling for the former CEO to be stripped of her CBE. Tim Brentnell, a former sub-postmaster convicted of fraud, who is still waiting uh, for full compensation, is our first guest this morning. Tim, first up, welcome to Talk Today. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I, I did a, a special on the Horizon Post Office scandal a year ago on JK Live, and I, I'm amazed that it's taken this long. I'm delighted as well, but I want to try and explain to people, Rosie and I, this morning, as much as we can. Um, my question to you would be this, my friend. Um, let's hear your story to give people a flavour of what it's like to have been a sub-postmaster whose life was torn to shreds, to be fair. Yeah, so um, I bought, um, along with my parents, our, our local village shop and post office back in 2005 um, as a, a way to enable me to stay in, in West Wales, in Pembrokeshire, and build a career. Um, I ran it well for five years until I was audited in 2009, uh, a shortfall of £22,500. Uh, was found, um, uh, which the post office uh, or the auditors um, helpfully said to me um, I needed to pay back to avoid a theft charge. Um, as soon as I paid that money back by raiding my savings and my parents' savings, um, I was then prosecuted for false accounting, um, which initially I was determined to uh, plead not guilty to. Um, but my barrister sat down with me and explained that I'd been standing up in Crown Court against the post office or the Crown, uh, and it would be very unlikely uh, uh, that I would win. And if I pled not guilty, I would probably end up being found guilty and sent to prison. So I ended up pleading guilty to false accounting to try and avoid a prison sentence. It's just extraordinary, isn't it, Rosie? Th thank you so much for, mm. for joining us, and I appreciate there's now much greater scrutiny on this story, thanks in part largely to the, the drama that ITV have been telling. But I think what people can't really get their heads around is presumably when things first went wrong for you, did you have faith that, you know, someone somewhere was going to be able to work it all out and go, right, that's the mistake, we can get it sorted? Yeah, um, I knew I hadn't done anything dishonest or wrong. Um, back in 2010, I didn't realise it, it, it could have been a computer problem. But I sort of explained to the, to the auditors and then the post office investigators that I didn't understand what had happened. Um, uh, I offered them my bank accounts and, and access to everything to say, look, I haven't, I haven't taken this money. It's not, it's not anything dishonest on my part, but I don't understand what's happened. Um, and uh, before the money was paid back, all they were interested in was telling me that, you know, it was my responsibility to pay it. It's in my contract that losses are down to me. And then as soon as it was paid, they then said, well, you know, uh, this is uh, false accounting. And I think taking Rosie's point a stage further as well, my friend, is is people who have just been woking, woking up to this story by watching the ITV drama and people who are reading about this, and we'll talk in much detail about, you know, the post office and to tick, will have two basic questions, and you, you, you tried to answer it there. You knew that you'd done nothing dishonest or wrong, and yet the legal system, your barrister, the, the huge body that is the government, the post office, were pinning this on you. Do you think at that moment, if you'd said, no, I'm not paying it back, I'm not, I'm not giving you my savings for something I didn't do, do you think it would have changed the course of what happened to you or was it such a frightening time that you felt that you were alone when, in fact, ironically, there were thousands like you, my friend? Yeah, well, that, this is, I mean... Uh... Every sub-postmaster that I've met since, I, um, you can tell we were all honest people. You had mm -hmm. to be honest, completely honest and, and completely of, of a clear background to even be given the position of being a postmaster. So the threat of a, a custodial sentence was absolutely terrifying. And it was almost like firefighting, just doing everything within your power um, to, avoid, to avoid that threat. And, and Tim, you're going through acute financial stress, emotional stress, presumably the people around you as well, you're now the subject of conversation to the people that you've been serving as customers who are thinking, mm. no smoke without fire. Yeah, very much so. I mean, uh, we, the, the retail business that we had suffered greatly because people assumed 
that I either had my hand in the till or literally uh, taking taking pensions from 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 pensioners. Um, and I, although I tried to maintain my my honesty uh, and my innocence, um, once you've pled guilty, um, people just say, "Well, you know, you've pled guilty to something." We wouldn't plead guilty if we hadn't done anything. So that no smoke without fire has rung very true for the last fifteen years. Obviously, as Rosie said just then, um, the ITV program has has reawakened um, this uh, interest in this story and quite rightly too. Nick Wallace, who we'll hear later, did an investigation. We talked about it some time ago. People are waiting for conversation. What I want to say to people who are waking up who don't know about the Horizon Post Office scandal, and I'm not saying that you're one of the fortunate ones, Tim, but people died still not having cleared their names. People tried to take their own lives. Later on in this show, Janet Skinner, a mother of two who remembers vividly telling me, she said, I, I, I remember the door shutting on the prison cell and I knew I had done nothing wrong. This is beyond disgusting. And, and the Met has launched a criminal investigation. Yesterday, Sunak says this is disgraceful. They got the dates wrong. Impressive. What do you and these other wronged people want, Tim? What do you want at the end of the line? There are, there are a few points that I feel are really important. Um, first of all, the, the ITV drama did a, a great job of not just saying it was a computer problem. The, the biggest problem is the way that the post office has treated us all. Um, ropey IT systems exist everywhere, and, and they could have taken it just as it was, but they decided to prosecute us and then deny us justice for the last decade and fight us tooth and nail every way through our through our uh, the steps that we took to try and rectify it um, but what we really feel and I really feel we need is we need the post office um, to be removed as arbiters of, of any compensation schemes because they're the people that prosecuted us and denied us justice so how is it fair that they're now allowed to be in charge of deciding uh, and making us jump through hoops um, to get to where we need to be financially Tim, I had no idea. Sorry. They will decide the, com the compensation, the very organisation that has been denying the injustice they did to you all for years. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's almost like we're in litigation again with the wow. post office and they're fighting us every step of the way with it. It's just... Um, uh... oh, the Go yeah, on, there were 700 people, 700 people convicted. So far, only 93 of us have managed to get our convictions quashed. And um, as um, I heard an interview last night with Lord Falconer calling for the government to step in, um, they, he said they could do it tomorrow if they decided to. They could introduce legislation that would just cancel all of those convictions without it having to go on for decades if it carries on at the pace it's at the moment for those other people to have their convictions quashed. Tim, and for we now... Just need the for now, Tim, uh, thank you. Uh, there's so many stories like yours, but to you and your parents, I really appreciate you sharing the story. And let's hope by talking about this story repeatedly again and again, we get you that justice.